Nestruck. There aren't too many gallery shooters on the Super Nintendo, or cabal shooters, or light gun shooters, or whatever you want to call these kinds of games. There's stuff like Tin Star, Metal Combat, The Dreadful Revolution X, T2 the arcade game, and of course there's Wild Guns. The difference of course is that this is a third person arcade gallery shooter instead of first person. And you'd think this is an arcade port, right? Nope, this was made direct to the Super Nintendo. Now, most of the games of this style were supported by the Super Scope 6, and if not, they at the very least worked with the SNES mouse. Wild Guns works with neither. On the surface, that seems kind of annoying, right? You'd think the D-pad wouldn't lend itself well to a gallery shooter like this, but really, it works fine. It's quick, it's precise, and you get a feel for aiming very quickly. And the game also does a very nice job escalating the difficulty as you get further into the game. There's six levels, each featuring two stages and subsequent mini-bosses, followed by a level boss. And these bosses are badass. You can see here, this isn't just a western motif. There's some science fiction, steampunkish type stuff here too. But yeah, there's the usual power-ups, you can hold up to five clear screen bombs, you can actually shoot the projectiles coming at you to the point that it fills up a meter that eventually grants you a hugely powerful weapon and invincibility. You can also dive and dodge, but you can't shoot and move at the same time. The D-pad can either control your movement or your aim, one or the other. You can't just hold the fire button down though, because eventually it turns into a lasso that you can use to freeze enemies. It can be tricky, but the game at least gives you a fair chance to get used to it in the first level, but after that, this game gets pretty damn chaotic and awfully difficult. That's why it helps to have a second player, and therein lies the appeal of Wild Guns. This is a fantastic multiplayer game with no slowdown or lag or any technical limitations getting in the way. The gameplay is still very smooth and responsive despite all the stuff going on on the screen, and the game's difficulty is balanced well enough that it starts out easy enough and gradually gets to the point where you start wanting to punch each other for missing bad guys. It's a lot of fun. There's a versus game mode too, where you compete with a second player to shoot the most targets and compile the highest score, so that's pretty cool. You can do this against the computer too if you'd like. Considering this is one of the best multiplayer games the Super Nintendo has to offer, I always thought that that was the primary driving force in keeping this game so freaking expensive. And that's not just because of the recent pricing bubble either, Wild Guns has been at least like $120 or $130 for years and years now. I guess that does at least speak to its quality, because I don't know anything about this game being legitimately rare. Even after it got released on the Wii and Wii U Virtual Consoles, the average price for the cartridge remains at something like $180. So yeah, you're better off getting the game on the Wii or Wii U, or of course by using a flash cartridge. Interestingly enough, there's a new Wild Guns game on the way, slated to be released later in 2016 for PS4, titled Wild Guns Reloaded. So obviously this game has a cult audience out there somewhere. So yeah, is Wild Guns worth playing today? Of course it is. It's one of the most energetic and entertaining multiplayer games I've played on any system, let alone on Super Nintendo. Is it worth $180? Hell no, no game is. So go find it in whichever way you can.